Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Bloom. Today's episode is all about medical coding job listings explained. Now, uh, before I get into the episode, I just want to let you guys know I do have a couple of other videos about medical coding job listings. I will leave them down in the description box below. That way you guys can check them out. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue. I'm a medical coder. I have been a medical coder for over 10 years. I really love what I do. I created my channel with the hope of sharing my knowledge and my tips and tricks with all of you. So if you have a second, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any episodes. And if this video helps you by the end i hope that you will share it with all the people that you know okay so let's get started before i get into the listings i just want to talk about a few things that i've been getting um, emails about in the last few days okay so hopefully it'll clear things up for you first off if you are brand new to either being a medical coder you want to be a medical coder or this is going to be your first job and you want to do it part-time i will let you know right now that there are no part-time medical coding jobs for brand new medical coders. Now, the only reason that I say this is because the simple fact that when you are brand new in the beginning, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of little things to start learning medical coding. They are not going to want to train you and it's a part-time position because then they wouldn't get very much work out of you, right? So this is the reason why I tell you guys that this is a full-time job. And when you're brand new and you're learning, it doesn't matter what field you're coming from. It's going to take a lot because what we do and what we know has to be a lot. You know, we essentially are learning the things that people who have gone to medical school know, okay? That's what we're asked of, okay? We're asked to know disease process. We're asked to understand, you know, what medical terminology is and, and what uh, different procedures are. We're asked to know all of these while never having gone to medical school. And yes, while we don't, we don't lay hands on patients at all, we still have to have that knowledge. So again, it takes time. Don't get into it expecting to, to be a part-time employee in the beginning because it's not going to happen. And it really doesn't sort of, even it doesn't really matter why the reason. Um, it is just because that is the way that it is, okay? So I don't want you guys to get into medical coding with any false expectations of what you can and can't do. Uh, of course, I don't know every place uh, in the U.S. that's hiring, but I do have experience and I do know the industry and I know this is one of those things. It's just like um, getting a remote position, you know, as your first job as a medical coder, it's not gonna happen either. Um, right now with COVID, of course, the game is a little different, um, but understand this, this is just a temporary thing. So um, once things get back to normal, it's, it's not going to be as this remote. Everybody's remote right now, I'm still remote. I can't wait to get back to the hospital, but <laughs> I'm still remote, you know, so um, that is the current climate right now that we are all in. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> all right. So let's get into some of this language. Now, um, another thing I want to talk about before I start getting into these listings is the simple fact that um, you need to have a decent cover letter. And it cannot be one of those that it's run of the mill and, you know, it's very, very robotic and very, you know, uh, just let, you know, just dress right dress. You don't want that. You need it to explain your situation. You need it to tell something about you. What is it that you are going to bring to them? What are your talents that you are going to bring to the table? Okay. That is what needs to be in there. It doesn't need to be the run of the mill, um, every day, just plain uh, cover letter. It needs to be about you, all right? Uh, I know this is sometimes difficult because we don't really sort of think about those things, but when you think about it, um, a lot of people are applying for these jobs, right? And you need to stand out in the field. So if you need to stand out, then you need to make yourself look as good as possible because 50 other people want the same job too. OK, now you can stand out based on whatever your talents are. If you have had previous medical background, that's great. You need to play that up. If you've ever had any experience around anything with medical coding, then you need to play that up. OK, those are the things that you need to put in there. Uh, if you've had a long absence uh, from from the workforce, say you were taking your time off to spend, you know, raising your children and things like that. You can still talk about the fact that you've either maintained, you know, wanting to go to school, you went to school, you uh, 
you did all of these things to maintain your education and things like that while still, you know, taking care of that time to take care of your family. So there's a lot of things that you can put on there. Just make sure that you look at your situation and, and look to see what you are bringing to the field. Okay. Cover letters are very important because that's the first thing that they're looking at along with your resume and your resume cannot have any, anything wrong with it. It needs to be perfect. You need to have all correct punctuation. You need to have correct uh, spelling. You need to have correct um, sentence structure in your objective statement or your, your vision statement or whatever you have at the top. Uh, everybody calls it something different, um, but you need to have a very good first impression, okay? You can't have any broken English. It needs to be perfect English. It needs to be written very well. And this is because any mistakes people are looking for those mistakes to get rid of that resume. Okay. We got 50 applicants. I'm not looking through 50 applications. Where are the mistakes? Okay. Next gone, gone, gone. So that way you need to stand out ahead of the pack. You need to have everything in there correctly. Do not use abbreviations. I talk about this all the time. Your abbreviation for something may be different from my abbreviation for something. Even if it is a common uh, abbreviation, you still need to spell out words. Okay. Doesn't matter. Just spell them out. Okay. So, and one more final thought on resumes, keep your resume down to two pages. If you have a 20 year work history and you worked at a bunch of different places, you need to go with at least the last 10 years. Okay. You don't need to go all the way back 20 years. If, if you've had a bunch of jobs in between or whatever. Um, and if it's not really relevant to what is happening, uh, with, that particular uh, position, then you need to sort of, I don't want to say leave it off because it can still be like on your um, application or whatever, but your resume is what they're looking at. That's the snapshot. That is what they're, they're going to look at to know if they want to select you to interview for this position or not. Um, But go with the positions, especially if you've had multiple jobs, go with the ones that are most relevant or that showcase your talents. That's the ones that you want to put on your resume. Okay. Um, make sure that you're looking at the, at the job listing and whatever is in that job listing, if it pertains to you and you don't have it in your resume, please update your resume. So that way those keywords can, can match up and then you can be, uh, selected for those positions. That is how those, uh, applicants get picked is because there's something in their resume that corresponds with the job listing. So again, make sure that you're doing those things. So that way your resume looks polished and it can pick up those keywords that are in that, um, job listing. If you possess those skills or qualities or whatever. Okay. So, uh, don't just go putting everything in there. Uh, and it doesn't pertain to you. You wouldn't want to do that. You want to put in what pertains to you. So, uh, the first state, let's go ahead and get into it now. (laughs) The first state I picked was Arizona. Okay. Uh, Arizona has, uh, quite a few job listings for medical coders. Uh, I just happened to type in medical coder and that was how these job listings came up. Uh, however, there are different ones that will be listed different ways, like, uh, health information clerk, uh, information, health information technician, that kind of thing. Uh, and they don't always ask for degrees or credentials as you'll see, uh, in these job listings below. So let's go with the first one. The first one is, uh, for a hospital and it is a private 122 bed psychiatric hospital specializing in healthcare and chemical dependency. Uh, it was built on three core principles, outstanding care, compassionate people, and unparalleled service. Uh, they are looking for a highly motivated per diem as needed, um, inpatient medical coder to be a part of their exceptional multidisciplinary team. The job description is per diem inpatient coder. The inpatient coder participates in an, in, as an integral member of the records management team by ensuring the quality maintenance of patient information, medical records within all laws rules and regulations of federal and state licensing agencies and joint commission standards for quality of patient care. The inpatient coder is primarily responsible for assigning accurate ICD-9, ICD-10 codes. Now I'm going to stop it right here. Now, sometimes you'll see these job listings say ICD-9. 
We are no longer in ICD-9. That does not pertain to us, okay? Um, it's Nobody is uses it anymore. So uh, if you see that, it's because a lot of times people who write these aren't necessarily technically coders, okay? They are somebody from HR who is writing these out so that um, it can just get out. The job listing can get out and they can try to get some candidates in. So uh, if you see that, don't panic. Uh, make sure that if you have studied ICD-10, that you put that in your resume. You studied ICD-10, so it'll grab your resume, all right? Um, next, going on. Um, uh, okay, assigning accurate ICD-10 ICD codes for patient discharge, inpatient and outpatient. The inpatient coder communicates with physicians for any coding related questions. The inpatient coder must possess interpersonal skills and effective communication, something I'm always talking about, uh, necessary to interact with all levels of department personnel and other departments, must be able to use standard office equipment and information systems, must possess the ability to prioritize and shift workloads to ensure departmental goals, for revenue cycle goals. Skills in, organ in organizing and prioritizing workloads is helpful. Please note that this is not a remote coding position. Uh, this hospital is centrally located with easy access to many areas of Greater Phoenix. Um, one of the nation's largest and respected hospital companies uh, has built an impressive record of achievement and performance steadily growing from a startup to an esteemed Fortune 500 company, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, qualifications. Education. High school graduate or equivalent required. Graduation from a medical records program preferred. Okay, so again, it's going to be somebody that's probably not as familiar with the verbiage but they said graduate from a medical records program preferred. They didn't say credentialed, okay? They said uh, somebody that's a graduate from a, a program, all right? Now, if you've gone through a medical coding program, you can put that in there that you've, you've graduated and if you're about to take your credential exam, then you need to let them know. Sometimes they'll say, okay, well then come back to us when you've, you know, when you've gotten your credential. But uh, in this instance, it does not say, okay? It says experience is one year experience, including ICD-9, ICD-10 coding um, in healthcare preferred, uh, previous behavioral health coding experience preferred. So this is a specialty type position because they're wanting you to have that knowledge of the uh, behavioral health section. And there's, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot to knowing behavioral health and there's a lot to n understanding like the symptoms versus definitive diagnosis and then doing that careful selection because you can't just pick uh, diagnosis up like anxiety. Uh, if, the, if the provider says this patient has anxiety, but it's like they have the symptoms of anxiety, you're not going to pick up anxiety because of the simple fact that this patient perhaps has not been diagnosed yet. In, when it comes to mental health diagnoses, it is extremely important that the provider states def definitively that uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to talk too fast, that's the problem. <laughs> um, the provider has to state definitively that that patient has that condition. Otherwise you have to go with symptoms when it comes to mental health diagnoses. Because of the simple fact that putting a mental health diagnosis in somebody's medical record could have huge impacts on them, all right? It, whether it is applying for particular jobs or um, anything you know you want to make sure that you are putting the correct information down based on the documentation and if it is not clear that you are uh, querying as much as possible but again if you're brand new um and if you if you took an interest in behavioral health that is something that you can put on your resume i have a strong interest in behavioral health i have extensive knowledge with um behavioral health or whatever uh as far as like did you extensively study it you know make yourself available for all of these different positions don't get discouraged when you see things like that because preferred does not mean required now it's the attorney in me the wannabe attorney in me uh that looks at language okay preferred does not mean required required means yes you do absolutely preferred means eh, we like it but if we like you we'll take you on that kind of thing so 
just want y'all to to think about that all right next one um I hope this thing comes out okay. Oh, okay, let's see. Uh, the next one is a claims, disability claims processor is responsible for reviewing, analyzing, and processing disability claims. In addition, this position is responsible for making determinations to prove or deny short-term disability payments. Um, we pride ourselves on being flexible, but there are some things that we feel strongly about. Being an excellent communicator, because you are, because you take care in articulating your own thought process as well as the, as well as critique the work of others, understanding the whole business. Great symptoms, great symptoms, great systems, aren't built in a vacuum. They require hard work and are from extremely smart uh, people across many disciplines and understanding how of how it all fits together. The Great teams are better than all-star players. No matter how great someone's ideas, they're, they'll be more improved with through collaboration. Responsibilities. Uh, processing, gaining, and maintaining and understanding the plan of designs and effectively apply the knowledge of everyday processing. Uh, effectively review and analyze short-term disability income claims, uh, initial liability and ongoing claim determinations from first submissions to finalization, analyze and assess claimant and medical information to determine the entitlement of ongoing benefits and valid conclusions, and then maintain complete and accurate coding and processing. Customer service, provide high quality customer service for, to all fund members, uh, re respond, to, respond to and resolve complex issues, including those escalated by members, um, raise issues as appropriate to team supervisor and department manager, learn and use professional excellence skills, excellence tools and uh, concepts to ensure efficient and quality output and service delivery. Teamwork, um, work cooperatively with other team members, actively participate in team meetings and training activities, perform additional responsibilities and projects as periodically assigned. Qualifications, high school diploma or a GED, medical billing and coding certification. Not required, but candidates with this qualification will be given preference. So in those instances, I want you guys to look what it says. Again, medical billing and coding certification not required, but candidates with this certification will be given preference. Here's the thing. If you've had previous experience as a medical coder and you don't have your certification just yet, they're saying that if somebody with a credential applies ahead of you and they like them, they will take them. Okay. So even though you may not have a credential just yet, uh, if you have the experience, that's when they'll look at you, okay? So if you have experience, but no medical coding credential, sometimes they will allow you to come in, but then you have a certain amount of time, usually a year, sometimes it's six months, I've heard, uh, to get and maintain your um, medical coding credential, okay? Whether you go through the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders, okay? So uh, that is something that I want you all to, to notice because sometimes um, I've gotten a couple of emails from people who are very upset because they did apply for a position like that that said something like that and they, they weren't even given a chance and they wanted to know why and I told them that was the reason. So um, yes, while sometimes you may get lucky because you're fresh out of school and you apply for this job and if no one else has applied then you get it, then you're lucky, okay? So um, that you need to be aware of, okay? So then it goes on to say skills and abilities. Prior knowledge of short-term disabilities is uh, claims required, okay? They did say that was required. Uh, ability to maintain production and productivity standards, uh, solid knowledge of medical terminology, ability to type 35 words per minute and have 10 key proficiency. You really do need to have 10 key proficiency. Knowledge of uh, Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Word. If this is one of your talents, you need to put that in there. Uh, professional and client focused approach to colleagues and assignments, strong oral and written communication skills with exceptional attention to details. 
If you put that on your resume, then you need to make sure that everything in your resume lines up with what you just said, okay? Um, ability to seek out experiences that may change perspective uh, and provide a opportunity to learn new things. Strong dedication to follow through on all tasks and assignments. Ability to organize, set priorities, work independently, and complete pro multiple projects within established deadlines and then ability to sit for long periods of time operating a computer keyboard. Um, and then it talks about employee benefits, um, and then that's it on that one. So uh, those are something that you know you need to be aware of. Be aware of the language whenever you are applying, okay? And the last one, because I'm, I'm almost out of time. <laughs> uh, this company is uh, working is, is a growing healthcare company in uh, Central Phoenix. They are looking for a medical AR specialist to join their team. Uh, responsibilities is to conduct account research when necessary to ensure accuracy. So attention to detail is huge. Uh, monitor all accounts, handle invoices from accounts that have been disputed, uh, handle the collections and outstanding bills, and if, and if allowed, negotiate repayment plans prepares and issues monthly invoices, ensure that accounts are balanced at the end of the day, conduct other duties as assigned, skills, proficiency in Microsoft Excel. Again, very important. Uh, strong attention to detail and ability to prioritize tasks um, as problems come to light. Excellent ability to communicate verbally in and in written communication, deep understanding of a medical AR cycle. Requirements, high school diploma, or GED. Two year experience in a medical AR position, uh, a certificate in accounting or medical billing is preferred, but not required. Again, preferred, not required. And then bilingual preferred. This was another thing that I had mentioned to you guys before. If you're bilingual, if you speak Spanish or if you speak some other language, then you need to put it on your uh, resume. If you, even if you speak sign language, because you never know who the the, the doctor's office or, or, or what um, what company that you're applying, and you need to uh, make sure that you're highlighting all of your all the things that make you good and all the things that you can bring to this company. Because trust me, they're lucky to have you but you need to know how to showcase yourself, okay? And again, it's gonna take multiple attempts. It's gonna take a lot of knocking on doors. It's gonna take a lot of closed doors in your face, but you gotta keep going. And as, as many times as you get told no, you have to take that and you have to keep going and you have to keep pushing forward because that is what it takes to get in in the beginning. Is it difficult? Heck yes. And I, I, have, I, I have always been truthful about that. Um, but once you're in, you're in and it is amazing. And I say that all the time, but then again, I'm very biased when it comes to being a medical coder because I love it personally. I'm just saying, all right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. But if you, um, if you, if this video was helpful for you, please share it. The more people that my videos touch and the more exposure my channel gets, the better off it is because then it can help so much more people and you never know who you could be helping. Anyway, I will go ahead and wrap this one up. So if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time.